Oh hey, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little bit. This is clearly not the space game tailspin that I was working on, but uh, I've been playing around with Godot while I had a break. I've been wanting to try out a different way of doing uh, 3D pixel art. Uh, there are many good ways of doing it, but I wanted one that sort of really tried to make use of uh, 3D and pixel art in one, so this has been my attempt so far. Um, it's probably spent a couple of weeks on this, getting used to Godot and all of that. Um, yeah, so I've just got a day-night cycle here. You can try to trying to show off and see. Got different particles falling, uh, but yeah, trying to show off and see like different things uh, in the scene and how the lighting affects it. Um, and all of that. Um, these are just two different characters that I've got run around. Uh, I've got also testing out, being able to actually place things <laughs> with some weird sound effects that I found. Couldn't find anything super appropriate, but made sure that I could at least update the navigation. Um, and yes, the camera can move um, as well. Um, it's just the default background. Uh, with an orthographic camera, which doesn't look great, but you know, for a test, that's, that's what I'm going for. Um, and you can change the time of day. Uh, yeah, so there isn't really all that much to show here beyond, again, just playing around with things. Um, but yeah, I'm reasonably happy with the effect. Um, trying to trying to get trees was probably the trickiest part because. Still want to have a pixel -y look with outlines, but also still have appropriate shadows, which I still kind of don't. You can kind of see that like the shadows are still made up of like a bunch of individual planes and all that. Anyway, um, ultimately, what how this how this whole effect works is that these are actual three D models with uh, some sort similar traditional UV mapping, but it's actually more of a screen shape, uh, screen space uh, UV. Yeah, I need to probably need to pull up Blender to really talk about it, but uh, which I will in a second. Um, but basically I'm getting the overall uh, screen space location of all the pixels and using screen, the screen location to then actually look up on a repeating texture. So that's why the pixels should always be pixel perfect. They should always be in the correct location and the 3D model should always be in the correct location. But you do kind of lose a bit of the uh, control over exactly how big everything is. Um, yeah, a little hard to explain, but I'll, I'll pull up Blender, hopefully show you in 3D what it actually looks like. So this is what the house looks like in Blender. Um, you can see that I tried to recreate the shader to some degree in Blender, but it doesn't, it still doesn't fully line up, but it, it helps give me a better idea of what it's going to look like in Godot. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, like this tiled texture here, I mean, again, the scaling and the perspective view doesn't look quite right, but down here in the bottom left, um, you can see the tiling lines up with having the, the roof at the right level and all of that. But like, ultimately, all of these are just textures that are projected in screen space onto these. So that's kind of like you've got a, you've just got this part here in the texture in the top left, that's just repeating. And same for some of these other parts here. Like the roof here is just made up of two different parts, the diagonal part and the horizontal part, um, which then when seen from the correct angle looks correct. Um, uh, yeah, so it can have two different houses and all that. And the benefit of, you know, one benefit at least of doing this is that I can select all these. Yeah, I don't need that. Don't need that. Can select all of these um, and then just like stretch it out. And we can see how that affects the, the final result over here in the, in the bottom left. So you can see it's basically just doing a cutout into 2D space. Um, so which makes one part of the content creation easier, which is nice. Um, but it do, you do lose some control. Trying to get things being pixel perfect is, uh, I tried it 
in a few different ways. I tried drawing out like a proper pixel art house in a sprite and then just trying to map it into a 3D model to get the correct shapes for shading and lighting. And it just, I just could not get things to line up pixel perfect. Uh, even though I would, you know, I've got this whole shader that I made out in nodes, had to learn shader nodes as well. Um, trying to do all of that so it would match up with the shader in Godot and I just could not get it to work, um, which was a bit of a shame, but uh, got to work within my limits. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's got to be a better way. Um, I also tried doing some, where, where am I? Yeah, um, I tried doing a Godot, that's not it, is that it? Oh, uh, I don't have to run the script. Hey, I tried making a script that allowed me to move things one pixel at a time uh, based on the things I had selected. And I went like, I want it to move along the Z axis. I want it to move along this, but by one pixel and all of that, and then had the screen size defined and the orth orth orthographic scale defined. It's probably a little hard to see in this, but uh, still didn't line up. So yeah, kind of threw out that idea because it was too much work. Anyway, uh, I hope this makes the effect a little bit more clear um, and really, yeah, the, the UV, if I select everything, is just, you know, I can change the stone, uh, whoo, not everything, no, there we go. I can change the stone to glass or to a tile and the only thing where the, the different square defines the repeating texture and then where you are in that kind of gives you an offset so I can have a little bit of control. Um, yeah, but it's uh, it's not perfect. So kind of have to kind of go with the flow and like I wanted to have it where I could keep the polygons really simple, but I'm wondering if I really want to get in good detailing, I just need to go in here and be like, actually model up, uh, where, where's it going? model up, you know, all of the lines across the here. Yeah, I could just like go something like that. <laughs> Not like that. Um, yep. Something like that. Anyway, I could go through and try to actually model up all the beams and all the tiles and then actually get some more detailing in there and not have to worry about being so pixel perfect and potentially use simpler colors up here so it doesn't have to line up too well. Anyway, uh, I'm reasonably happy with the effect, but it has turned out to be a bit of a content creation issue, which you know, is ultimately a big problem uh, to, to solve if you're trying to keep things simple. Um, so since I was able to use all open source stuff, uh, I've put it up on GitHub. I'll have a link in the description. Um, basically, I tried to explain how d some of the different elements work, the different assets I used. Big shout out to Davin. David Holland uh, for their Texel correct matching for camera location and pixel outline and snapping of objects to the correct location uh, for rendering. Uh, that helped a lot so that when you move the camera around, even just when objects themselves move around, that things don't, you don't get sub pixel jittering going on. Um, yeah, and there's also some pre built releases for Windows and Linux if you're really really keen um, but uh, yeah uh, I can't claim like I've got a backup shader here uh, I can't claim that the way I've uh, organized it is particularly perfect or particularly great um, again it's my first real time digging into Godot so could be doing things wrong and there is it there it is Godot so yeah I've just yeah, my, my overall structure is probably a bit off. I tried following it. Um, it's all written in GD script, which is again, also a little bit of a learning curve, but it's been all right. I still prefer C sharp, but I'm also happy with the fact that GD script should just work everywhere. Um, I have built in some things for test purposes. Oh yeah, I try also use a viewport in half res to kind of get an idea. Uh, pixel size. So in theory, we can also uh, bump up that pixel size to like three times, which gives you basically it's more zoomed in. Um, so, which you know, even though I didn't export it for Mac, I do have this also working on Mac, and you know, on the really high res screens, you kind of need pixel size four to actually see it. Um, 
I should really expose that as a UI option somewhere. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, hope it's been interesting. Hope it's, I still don't know how much I love the effect. Um, anyone is of course welcome to recreate it. There's again issues where this tree texture is now offset incorrectly for the higher resolution. So that's something to, to work on. Um, but it probably means that the way I should texture trees is not by having trying to line up things. Everything should be based around, as I've learned, everything should probably be based around uh, things that can just be repeating and not have to be pixel perfect. So yeah, anyway, hope that was interesting. Go check it out on GitHub if you're so inclined. Um, feel free to ping me if there's any, if you've got any questions. Um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Another thing I couldn't get working was 3D audio. So both of these characters and their footsteps are just always in world space. I don't know, whatever it is, camera space. It's just a regular thing. It's played the same as the background music. Um, just could not get it to work. I put a 3D audio source directly in front of the camera, attached to it at all times and just nothing. So if anybody knows why, that would be great. All right.